Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Maitri. Do we have any coffee drinkers with us tonight? Raise your hand if you drink coffee or tea. Yeah, me too. So I like coffee, and this summer I had the opportunity uh, uh, in the central highlands of Vietnam, the coffee farmer in his coffee trees, his coffee plant, and they were planted lots of different trees. And these different trees were intended to shade the coffee plants because the coffee plants only needed about 40% direct sunlight. The other 60% they didn't need, they needed shade to grow properly. But the trees were not just any kind of trees. Some of them were jackfruit trees. Some of them were peach trees, lots of banana plants, because this farmer was an organic farmer and he didn't spread fertilizer. The fruits would ripen in these trees and fall out onto the ground and fertilize his coffee plants. So he had lots of different kinds of trees to provide lots of different kinds of nutrients. And so when you drink your coffee and you taste earthiness, it's because that plant grows in the earth. If you taste a hint of fruit, it might be because it was fertilized by some of that fruit. It's an interesting way to see the world that all things come from something else. In 1989, the Vietnamese master Thich Nhat Hanh gave a Dharma talk called The Art of Flower Arranging. And that's the topic of my discussion tonight. And I'm going to fit that into the coffee plantation here in just a moment. So tonight, I, I'm drinking tea. Uh, you might frequently see me drinking. It's, you know, six o'clock in the morning here in Vietnam. So I usually have coffee, but this morning I chose tea. But this is not just any tea. This is tea from the coffee berry. So the coffee bean grows inside a little berry. And when the coffee farmers take the bean out to dry it out and then roast it, the berry is left behind. And you might think it's just tossed out. This particular farmer saves the berry and dries it out. And then you make tea from it. And it actually has no caffeine in it because the caffeine is either in the leaves of the coffee plant or in the bean itself. But in the fruit, there's no caffeine left over. And so what you get is this fruity tea um, that tastes sweet doesn't really taste like coffee at all. It tastes a little bit like a dried plum, a little bit like a prune, and you make tea from it. And it doesn't come out really sweet like a fruit juice, but it's something altogether different. And taking out Hans, The Art of Flower Arranging, He had, uh, he would frequently teach this type of lesson to the folks who would come and listen, the devotee, lay devotees who would come and listen to his Dharma talks. And sometimes he would have these at his uh, monastery in France, at the Plum Village. And they had a great big outdoor, not really a farm, uh, garden big fields, trees, flowers, and he would send 
the attendees out to pick flowers. And then to come back and make a flower arrangement. And he would use this making a flower arrangement as a metaphor of organizing someone's life. Having a centerpiece, you know, a center flower, having support flowers around it, maybe having other things around it. But the lesson that I learned from this lesson from Thich Nhat Hanh is the lesson he taught on non-discrimination and non-duality. And it lasted, it's lasted years and years for me in better understanding the Dharma. And that's why I chose this. Thich Nhat Hanh, not unlike the old story of the Buddha holding up a flower and Mahakashapa smiling in the crowd when no one else understood, Thich Nhat Hanh would hold up a flower He'd say, when I see this flower, I see a beautiful flower. But I also see non-flower elements. I see sunshine that shone down on the plant and encouraged the flower to grow. I see rain that watered the flower and gave it life. I see dirt. I see worms under the dirt that kept the dirt just in the right softness so the plant could grow, the roots could spread, and the flower could bloom. I see nutrients in the ground. I see the little girl from the house across the street lean down and smell it and take in all the beauty and the aroma of a beautiful flower. But I also see garbage. Because garbage was made into compost. So old newspapers, eggshells, grass clippings, all thrown into a garbage heap to make compost. And this flower with its non-flower elements, I can also see garbage. I can see the ocean because the oceans evaporate, form into clouds, clouds rain on my fields, flowers grow. Everything around me turns into a flower. The tree dies. Branches fall out onto the ground. They disintegrate, turn into dirt. The dirt grows flowers. So in my flower, I have trees, I have bird droppings from birds, I have ocean, I have a little girl across the street, I have wind, I have sunshine, and I also have garbage. Isn't that really the metaphor of our lives? We have all these things that we come into contact with. And in each of us, there are human and non-human elements. In each of us, there's garbage that can still turn into something beautiful. One of my favorite quotes of this, and I actually, this was a, this was a Dharma talk, so it was a recording. I had to actually transcribe it myself. So forgive me uh, if it's a little broken, but if you ever listen to Thich Nhat Hanh, his English was a little broken. And uh, so I'm not going to try his Vietnamese accent. But he said this, and this is my favorite quote from the whole thing. And he would have people make flower arrangements as part of his Dharma talk edit, uh, exercises that he would do. But this one, he says, I remember at the Ojai Foundation during a retreat for artists, one very special flower arrangement was presented to us before the Dharma talk. And I saw banana peels. I saw sawdust. I saw eggshells together with the flowers. There was one person who said, maybe that this showed disrespect to the Buddha. 
if you present it on the altar, the flowers and the banana peels and the eggshells and the sawdust. I said, no, this is the utmost respect. It shows that you understand the Dharma and the Buddha would be delighted to receive this flower arrangement. What a great lesson Thich Nhat Hanh was telling us. Garbage is just part of this great world that we live in. And it can transform like everything else into the great parts of the world that we see. Thich Nhat Hanh's non-duality, but he didn't call it non-duality. He called it non-discrimination. But it's the same. It's this idea that we're all part of the greater whole. And he tied this into many of his teachings. But it was all part of this teaching of his that was constant. That if we're mindful of the world around us, we see we're all connected. And he gave that same consistent analogy uh, when he talked about death. And he talked about, in another Dharma talk, he talked about his sister dying. And she was really close to him, and he was really close to his sister. And someone asked him, he like, well, you know, Tai, they called him, which means teacher. Teacher, doesn't it make you sad? He says, oh, maybe a little at first. But I realized my sister was everywhere with me. My sister had sister and non-sister elements. And she was like the cloud, the water. So anytime I saw water, I saw my sister. It was raining and I saw my sister. I see an ocean stream. I see an ocean. I see a stream. I know my sister is there. I see her every time I see water. And just because she's not the water in a glass in front of me today, doesn't mean she's not part of, doesn't mean she just disappeared. Her water is just somewhere else now. Maybe it's in the cloud. Maybe it's in the ocean. Maybe it's in the stream. You see, water doesn't stop being water just because we don't see it in the glass in front of us anymore. It continues, maybe in another form, maybe in the form of ice, maybe in the form of steam, maybe in the form of liquid flowing water, but it doesn't stop existing. These teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh to teach us about non-discrimination, about teaching us the nature of the world, of the universe, of the cosmos, had a very important impact on how I learned to see myself in the world, how I learned to overcome my PTSD, because I realized that the terrorist that caused the bombings that gave me my PTSD probably had terrorist and non-terrorist elements in them. I was influenced by the terrorists. I saw the remnants of the bombing they did in Indonesia, the dead bodies that I had to sort through to find the Americans who were killed there. I stepped through the dust, the blood, the dirt of the bombing sites. Having those terrorist elements did not make me a terrorist. But it made me understand the nature of the world. So next time you see garbage, and I'm reminded of a picture, I think it was in our last Poetry Slam episode. 
that Unsan had taken a picture of daffodils growing out of a garbage heap or a compost heap or something in his backyard, I think. And I saw that and I thought at the time, I know a darn when I talk about that. When you see garbage, don't think of it only as garbage. It has non-garbage elements. When you see someone who's totally different from you, don't see them as only different. See them as having the same elements that you have. So when the sun shines down on you, it's the same, it's the same sun that shines down on me here in Vietnam. When it rains in Massachusetts, it's the same water that rains here in Vietnam. When you breathe the air, it's the same air your neighbor across the street breathes. We all share the same elements. We all come from the same places. We all transform back into these non-human elements. See reality in life. And if you do, you are a great offering on the altar of the Buddha. <laughs>